So I'm going to talk about four different sort of platforms or tools for sequencing. Um, and let me just say first out, like this is not intended to be a sales pitch by any means. I'm not selling anything. It's not intended to be like a comprehensive demo or review of any of these products. Um, instead, what I really want to do is do something that's a little bit deeper in some ways. Like it's very easy to go on the web and see somebody demo a, a product or a tool or whatever. But I think what's kind of missing sometimes there is the idea of talking about how that musical tool sort of shapes the musical output that comes out of it. And so I chose some tools that I love, that I really enjoy using, and I wanted to kind of look at those tools through that lens of how they affect the musical output that I have. So just sort of a little bit of background on me. Um, I've been doing electronic music for 20 plus years, something like that, both producing stuff as well as DJing. Um, my sort of sweet spot tends to be like really sort of like very rhythmically driven stuff very much in the dub techno kind of vein. And so a lot of the examples that I'll show are, are sort of related to my style of music, as you might expect. Um, but the nice thing is I think these tools were sort of lend themselves to all sorts of different things. So the first tool that I want to show and kind of talk about is called patterning. Uh, patterning is, a, um, is basically a drum machine for iOS. Um, and I want to take the moment to sort of shout out Olympia Noise Company, which is the company that makes this. Uh, when I started developing the idea for this presentation, I reached out to them and said, hey, I'd love to, I'd love to um, be able to show the new beta version. So this is actually patterning two, which is not out yet. Um, they asked me to make the full disclosure that if there are bugs or if it crashes, like it's not that the software is bad, it's just that it's actually in beta right now. So I will, um, when I show stuff that is unique to patterning two, I'll try to call those specific features out. Um, but I've been using patterning one for a year, year and a half, and it is seriously, it's by far my favorite musical tool on iOS, um, and one of my favorite drum machines just ever in general. Um, it's just a super inspirational tool, so I want to show you a little bit about why that is. So what I've got loaded up right now is a sequence that I already made in patterning, so I'll use that as a chance to kind of quickly just show you the, the overview of the app, and then show you some things that I think are unique about it. Um, and why it leads to sort of unique musical output, at least for me. So this is patterning. The way that it's sort of set up is that there are, um, there are eight channels. There are eight channels along the, um, the left side there. So right now, I've got loaded up a pretty simple drum kit of kick, snare, uh, like a closed hi-hat and a clap. I've got a chord sample loaded up, uh, as well as a couple percussive things there as well. And basically, each layer in patterning uses that circle or radius kind of metaphor. So the thing that's really unique about patterning and the sort of like A number one thing that I think is super cool is to make a pattern in patterning, you literally just take your finger and you draw up. And so a note being placed and that note's velocity or loudness is intrinsically linked there, which is kind of unique. Usually it's like you might, in a lot of sequencers, you'd place a note and then maybe you go back and use a mouse to draw in what the velocity or the volume of those notes are and things like that. But in patterning, those things are linked together. Um, so I'm going to start this just to kind of, you can kind of hear and see what it does. So this is the kick channel that's playing right now. Uh, I don't have anything in the snare channel right now. I've got a hi-hat pattern going right here. And this is one place where you kind of start to see a little bit about what I mean. Like right now, all of those are full volume. This is one of the new features of, I'm going to turn this down just a touch. Uh, this is one of the new features of patterning too, is that it has this idea of a ratchet sort of built into it, and I'll, I'll go back to that a little bit later on. And that's one of those things that for me was really inspirational when I started using patterning. So what I want to do is just flip over, this is a completely blank pattern now at this point. So you see that the time is kind of going, continuing to go around the circle as opposed to being like a linear thing like most sequencers tend to do. Um, one thing that's kind of unique and kind of cool about patterning is that each part of a sequence can have a different number of steps, and those steps can be of different resolutions. So for example, right now on the kick channel, I've got it split up. I'm going to flip over to this tab right here. I've got it split up into 16 steps, um, and this is the step duration right there. So I can change that, so I can change the resolution. Um, of those steps, and I can also change the number of steps that's in a particular pattern by like rolling that up or down. And I'm using 32 right here, but I could just as easily use something odd like 27. And so that's kind of cool. So if you're into odd meter stuff or if you're into polyrhythmic kind of stuff, 
all of a sudden, just immediately, that is like, whoa, I, you know, that's kind of a game changer for some people because being able to do odd link stuff like that is not a feature that's built into a lot of traditional sort of electronic music software. So like, I probably don't want my kick to be uh, 27 steps long. That's a little weird even for me. But I can just go ahead and draw in a first note. And, and, uh, and so like just that kind of little gesture right there of being able to go, like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a little like roll up on the kick drum as far as those things getting louder? This is a feature that'll work in patterning one or two. Just being able to go in there and just sort of use your, your gesture of your finger to draw those notes in um, is really cool. And so what I've noticed for me, what I tend to do is I tend to do things that I would never normally do because of that. Like I would go in here and well, like let me have 64 steps and let me make these step durations like in triplets and really kind of weird. So like as it's going to come around to the start, So being able to play with velocity and volume and stuff like that, like that's just not something that I tend to do with other tools that I sequence in. But on this, it feels like just super easy. And so it kind of pushes me into territory that I wouldn't otherwise go into. Um, it's all sample based. And so like you can, I'm gonna stop that pattern for a second. Uh, you can go and load different drum kits up. It's, it's billed as a drum machine, but really it can load any kind of sound. Um, that's one place where uh, I'm not sure what their future plans are. It'd be great to be able to sort of load a whole pack of things up. And you can load an entire drum kit up, but what's a little difficult right now is, um, is loading a whole bank of sounds of your own. Like you can import individual sounds like through Dropbox and stuff like that. So I've got a specific thing loaded up. This is a new feature in patterning too that I really love. It's just this little drum pad thing. So that didn't exist in patterning one. And what's so cool about that is now you can actually record straight into one of those patterns by tapping into the pads, which, um, which is a really, a really cool thing. So you can flip a metronome on if you want. Um, having a hard time catching the downbeat on this, actually. I made it a little too abstract for myself, I guess. Here, I'm just going to give myself a marker. So like you can see, I plopped those chords in there, and when I was hitting those pads, now I can go in and I can adjust all the other things that I could normally do there. On each sample, I can control all the individual tuning stuff as well, which is really fun, especially with things like chords. Um, and one thing that's really unique about patterning as well is that I get all these different layers of stuff I can play with. So if I flip over to this pencil icon, I can actually come in there and I can um, choose which layers show up. And, um, and so like I could, for example, I could go in there and say, well, you know, I'd like, course, I'd like to mess with coarse tuning on this, like while it's playing. So like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the mixer and solo just that, uh, just that chord channel for a second. And so all I did just by drawing in there is basically transpose that sample up or down as it's playing. And you can do that with all sorts of things. One of the things that's really cool in this new version, like I said, is this idea of, of ratcheting that's built into it. And so you can use your fingers to, to play with that. So on that little section that I was just playing with there, you've got a little ratchet on that chord now where it's that little roll, that little flam thing that it's doing there. And so that's really fun. Um, and so like I said, it's just a really inspirational tool, um, one that has some unique things that I would never typically think to do. Um, and so that's really inspirational. So they not only gave me access to the beta, but I actually have three download codes for the original patterning to give away. So if you've got a name tag with one of those numbers, we'll do a drawing. And if you're into that and you use iOS, then there's download codes for the, for the new one coming up soon. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is switch over to the Novation circuit, which I got to stay here. Actually, I told you I'm juggling a lot of stuff here. So this is the uh, this is the Novation circuit right here. Um, this is one of the first new pieces of gear that I bought a couple of years ago because I had kind of gone dormant in terms of really actively producing stuff for a while, and uh, and this tool is one of the things that kind of brought me back. Um, 
the thing that I love about sequencing with this is that this is the kind of tool that I can take and literally like load some sounds up and sit on my couch and kind of play like a video game. Um, it runs on batteries if you choose to or on main power. Uh, you can plug headphones directly into it. And basically the circuit is four drum sounds and, um, and two synth sounds. So you get a, a synthesizer channel, you get a second synthesizer channel, and then you get four individual drum sounds. Um, they've been, they being Novation, the company that makes this, has done a pretty amazing job uh, over the years of updating this. So I got this just under two years ago, and there's been, I think, three, two or three major firmware updates since then, which are totally free. They've got a new one coming, like version 1.7 is coming soon. There's some videos out online right now. And it's just like they keep adding more and more features for free. And so that's really kind of cool. Like you don't see that a lot from manufacturers where they're like, well, you bought the thing, cool. Now how can we keep making money off of you? That doesn't seem to be their approach at all. So like for example, right when I first bought it, um, I think just within a couple of weeks after I bought it, they added the ability to load your own samples to it because the drums on this are all sample based. So again, you could load any kind of sound up that you chose to, it doesn't have to be drums. Uh, but for me, that's really, that's really a big part of my sound. So I sort of jumped right on that. Um, so sequencing on this is very much more of a traditional step sequencer kind of approach. Uh, for the drum channels, uh, this is drum one and this is drum two. And then when I switch to the other page, this is drum three and this is drum four. So I can really quickly, uh, I can really quickly get a sort of stereotypical thing going here. So like 30 second techno, right? Like so, just the ability to like jump in and kind of do that really quickly is is really fun. Um, and then having the, the sequencing channel for a couple of synthesizers built into it is also really kind of fun as well. And you can step sequence things there. Uh, I'm gonna switch to some other sound. There, that's cool, that'll work. Uh, I've accidentally just hit the length button so you can kind of see that I can just sort of like I did with patterning, I can actually change the length of patterns here as well. So look, if I wanted to have sort of an odd timing thing, I could say, well, I'd, I'd like this to be 11 steps long and I, could, and I could play in some stuff like that. And then that's like super manic and weird and I'm gonna get rid of that. You know, so you can, you can do a lot of uh, different things. And I don't know if that, I think the length part was in there uh, originally. They've since added like some micro note things for drums, which that's the sort of one downside to this piece is that um, because there's no menu, no LCD or anything, you have to, it very much is like a video game where you have to kind of remember the cheat codes. You're like, okay, I gotta go to this page and do this thing. And like, oh, there's that like secret drum tie mode thing. So I, I tend to not work very well with buried menu, things like that. So like. One of the new things in the new firmware is like the ability to pan stuff left and right. That wasn't in there originally. So I'm like, perfect, I can have drums on the left and like all the synth stuff on the right and then I can just process that separately except I don't know how to do it. Like I have to go and look at the manual and find out how to do that because <laughs> like that'd be really useful. And I haven't literally taken like the 30 seconds to go and dig through the manual online to find out how to do that. So that's the one downside of this. But again, like this is super fun because it's such a, such a fast like inspirational thing. Like the fact that I can just go in there and go like, okay. And I can flip over to the other sense channel, which I tend to, I tend to do a lot of like, well, one channel will be uh, like, one channel will be sense and another will be a bass. And then this is just ridiculously fun. It has a one knob filter thing. It's built into it, so you can rave all night. Yeah, so like I said, I think about this as kind of like a video game machine. Um, and so it's tempting to dismiss it as like a toy, but honestly, this was sort of like my inspiration machine about a year and a half ago. I'm like, I've got to start working on stuff again, and this became the box to kind of like pull me back into that world just because it's so much fun. And I've used it in hotel rooms and airplanes and on the couch, and I'm always like overjoyed. Like that's the moment I love is like I take it back into the studio and plug it in on the big speakers, and I'm like, oh, 
like that sounds really good. Like that's awesome. It sounded great in here, but like it actually sounds really good on the head on the you know mains as well. So that's really fun. Uh, the second tool I want to switch to, or the third tool I guess, is the Novation Beat Step. And so this is a pretty new addition to my studio setup. Uh, this is the uh, did I say Novation Beat Step? The Arturia uh, Beat Step Pro rather. So this is the Arturia Beat Step Pro. Um, and what I kind of really love about this, I was talking to somebody earlier about this, is that it turns the experience of using stuff that wouldn't necessarily feel like this into uh, a tangible, like, physical thing. So um, I am a big Ableton Live user. I've used Live for 15 years or something like that. And it wasn't until I got this and sort of plugged it into Live that it felt like Live was an instrument. Like, as far as for making music with. Like, I've used Live for performing Live with for forever. You know, and so that's a different kind of thing where it's like I might have something to launch clips and something to like control volumes and do effects with and stuff like that. Um, but actually sequencing in live tended to be like hook up a pad controller and drum some stuff in to live, capturing it as MIDI or what have you, or hook up some microphone and like record a guitar in or record a live sound or that kind of thing or go in and, you know, click some notes in, in the editor. But what this lets me do is actually turn uh, live into something that feels more like an instrument. So what I'm going to do is just quickly kind of switch. I'll toggle some back and forth between this to show you how it's set up. So on the on the uh, BeatStep Pro, there's sort of three channels. There's a drum channel and then two sequencer channels. All those are independent. Um, I've got it hooked up right now over USB to the laptop, so it's basically sending all that control information to live through the laptop, or, or to the laptop over USB. But then I've also got, this is sort of out of frame here, I've also got my modular rig uh, set up over here. And there's just a few things. I'm going to slide this down a little bit so it's on the screen a little bit better. The modular rig, this is just like a single synth voice, just a single mono synth voice. And then I've also got some white noise patched into this VCA to basically act as like a little percussive thing. So like if I flip over to the drum sounds, that doesn't do anything. So that's cool. There it is. So I've just got this. There's like a little bit of filtered noise. There's an LFO controlling the filter cutoff. So, so that, that noise doesn't really, it's not, a, it's not affected by how hard I'm playing this. It's affected by something else in there. But the cool thing is this top row of pads, I've got it set up to a drum rack in Ableton Live. And it kind of doesn't matter then what's coming from live and what's coming from the modular there. Like all of those things are just integrated really seamlessly. And so that's kind of a fun experience to be like, well, my rig is sort of a hybrid. I've got Ableton Live in the computer. I've got the circuit maybe doing stuff. And I've got this. And I can sort of control everything from this. This is sort of like the brain for the mothership in that sense. And so it, you can do this in, uh, you can sequence with this in a bunch of different ways. So I can go in there and I could do a traditional step sequency kind of thing on here. So basically, uh, when I'm selected on a channel here, the lit up pads indicate that that note's going to play. Uh, I'm going to flip over to live and have live start its, start its uh, clock. Whoops. So right now, just on this one drum channel, I can step sequence like that, or I can flip it into record mode. That's a little hard without a metronome going, so I don't, I don't know what it's going to do. So I'm just going to kind of flip it back to that. So that's one channel. The sequence is just stored in the beat step itself at this point. Um, I can come back over here and I can flip over to the sequencer channel. That's a voice in Ableton Live. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this for just a second here. The beat step, the two sequencer channels are monophonic. Uh, but what I've got going on in Live here is on one of those channels, um, I have a little chord plugin that's built into Live that's turning that single note into a, into a minor key chord. So, so as I hit that, it's turning that single note into a chord. And there's doing a little bit of randomization to choose an octave up or down as well, just to kind of give a little bit more variation. So again, like it kind of doesn't matter what these pads are controlling in some ways, because it's all, it's all sort of summed together here. So, so the unique thing about the beat step as a sequencing tool for me is that it doesn't matter what it's hooked up to. It just all presents itself in the same kind of interface, which is super cool. So I can go in here and I can, um, I can run the sequence here in live. I can flip the beat step into record mode.
So you can hear that random kind of kicking in so that it's playing with the octave of where that chord is. And then same thing here. Um, I've actually got this going to two different channels. On the sequencer two thing is controlling, uh, is controlling a channel in live but it's also controlling that little mini synth voice that's built into the modular. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll mute the one from live. So this is just the modular by itself now. And I can, I can, uh, I can mute the modular as well and, uh, and do just the voice that's built into live. But again, it all just presents as the same thing here. So that's really fun. And then, like I've kind of been coming around to, live is sort of the, the heart of my rig. Um, and so the fun thing here is that I can then push all this stuff into live. Um, and that, I think, is the last thing that I want to leave you with, is just how good it is to have, um, like the music producer Daniel Lenoir, who works with all sorts of people and is a brilliant producer in his own right, he's like, the source material can be as lo-fi as you want, but what's really essential is to have a hi-fi capture source. And so for me, in a lot of ways, live tends to be that sort of really hi-fi capture source. Um, and so this hybrid rig re really works well with that. Um, patterning actually has a feature that just like blew me away when I found out about it. It actually has, I'm gonna flip over to this again for a second here so you can see this. Um, it actually has a full uh, separate multi-track output that you can output completely as an Ableton Live set. So not just like, and, and they've set it up now too, I believe, so that you can get, uh, yeah, you can get the, uh, the individual tracks there as well. And I wanna say you can actually get the, the MIDI notes as well as the audio output, but basically it'll be like, okay, generate like a full Live set out of everything I've sequenced in patterning, and then it just produces a zip file. So I throw it up in Dropbox or something like that, on the laptop, I pull it straight down in, and I open it up in live, and like, poof, there's all of my stuff right there. There's like everything I did when I was, you know, sitting on the bus or whatever, playing with the iPad by itself with headphones on, and there's like the whole thing right there, right into live. Um, obviously, the the circuit syncs to uh, syncs to live as well, um, and I use it that way as well. And I will route it into the computer and record stuff into live. The uh, the beat step, I can record all of that MIDI straight into live and then the audio output of the module goes straight into live. Um, and so that's, that's a really kind of fun way to be able to work, to have all this sort of interchangeable stuff going on there. So that's, uh, so that's kind of the, the concluding thought is just uh, find a system that works for you and think about how you can interconnect those things. Uh, because for me, that's really the, where I find a lot of joy is in saying like, well, the patterning has its own sort of flair. And so like I'll do some drum programming that and suck that into live. And like the circuit has its own thing. So I'll do something there and pull that into live. And like the modular has its own craziness going on here. And so I'll route that all in together. You know, so whatever, whatever works for you, um, hopefully this has been, been helpful and, uh, and maybe inspirational. So thanks very much.